Welcome at the Things Conference with another video interview. Hi, who are you and what do you do? My name is Rich Lansdowne and I, uh, I look after uh, the deployment of geolocation services for Semtech to cover all of uh, LoRaWAN and the networks and work with all the, uh, the, the network operators to make sure they've got a service they can use. Geolocations, um, I've talked to a lot of people already and everybody says we need that uh, um, uh, and it is not so easy to do. It, it's the single most valuable you know, value add for any kind of IoT data. To be able to geotag data hugely enriches the, the, the value it can bring. Um, but also, of course, we talk about asset tracking and so people want to know where their things are. But uh, there's a huge value in just knowing where your data comes from as well to create all kinds of heat maps, to manage congestion in networks, to uh, you know, deal with the scarce resources of the radio spectrum, for example. So why is it so difficult? So I guess the problem with any, any uh, mobile device is, is you've got to work out where you are based on radio signals, and radio signals like any kind of light, they bounce around, they reflect off things, and trying to work out you know, from, from those radio signals where something is, you, you essentially... The, 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 you pull a crumpled up piece of string straight, and the, it's longer than it was if it went directly there. You know, so so um, it's getting an awful lot of data and trying to work out what's real data and sort out the you know, the wheat from the chaff. I guess is what we'd say. Mm -hmm. and, and why is it specifically so hard for uh, uh, within uh, LoRa? So what we see, if you take something like a smartphone, the smartphone's got every sensor going. It can, in a sense, gravity. It can report all the cellular base stations it sees, any Wi-Fi it sees, any Bluetooth, it basically turns on all the sensors and catches any signal it can receive and sends it all off to Google or Apple or Microsoft and they turn that into a location. So essentially they take a brute force approach in, in your phone, hence when you turn on location services, what happens to your battery? <laughs> so in IoT that's not going to cut it because we need to have these things out there for years on a battery. So we need to take a much more intelligent approach to say, at this particular point, what do I need? Do I need to know if this uh, asset is still in inventory? Is it still in the, the yard or the building? Has it moved? So we maybe can use one technology at that point, and then if it's moving along the road, you can say, OK, as long as I get every 20 minutes, I know roughly where it is within a kilometre or two, that's enough to know it's moving in the right direction. When it gets into a... Uh, uh, a warehouse, maybe you want to know which shelf and which aisle. So it's a very different problem here, here and here. So the sensor needs to have a certain amount of intelligence built into it to create the event triggers that would switch from one to another because we can only afford to use one pretty much at a time because otherwise the battery just won't last or the device will cross too much. So, um, you know, Apple and Google give you all this stuff for free on your phone because they want to sell you the, uh, the, the, the apps and the context data that's the, on the phone. Whereas here, um, you know, we've got to break that problem right down and make it much more streamlined. Otherwise, the devices are just not going to last. But it's highly complex to create a, a system that will work for all sensors or have the intelligence for all sensors that uh, or can apply to all sorts of sensors right. uh, because you've got so many variables. So we've actually created a platform which we uh, have launched on TTM Community Network um, after the conference. And that is a platform which is something where different um, vendors, people who have technology, maybe they've got a solution for a three-dimensional space to uh, accurately locate something inside a, a, a building, they can put the, their technology into our, our platform and we can start to build solutions on top of each other. So it's a, it's a collaborative location platform because we don't see that any single technology will ever address the complete use case of, of most applications. So we're building that technology in pieces, so or that, that complexity. We're breaking it down into building blocks and allowing layers to be put on top of it with very simple decision-making triggers. So has it moved, for example? You can do that with a simple accelerometer. So, uh, and you talk about we, we is, is, is a company Semtech, right? But so, uh, uh, are you building this, are you also part of the, the LoRa Alliance? Is, is, is this something that correct. is open source or is it available, is it commercially available? What, uh, so th the, the service that we have right now, we're just going into a, a, a private preview. We're working with a, a relatively small number of uh, partners who are all 
members of the Law Alliance. For us, it's very important to the ecosystem for them to work together because if we crack the same nut multiple times, this, the whole thing moves more slowly. So if we've, if we've cracked a nut, put it there where people can see it, where they can use it, bring this one, bring this one, and make a, a, a realistic solution. So it's very important to take uh, the alliance with us, to the, the members and the ecosystem, and it's also important to enable innovation and enable the community of developers that we have here, which is a fantastic community of developers, to get their brains working on how they optimize things and, and, and really drive down the current consumption, drive down the cost, and just think you know, a little bit smart about how we, how we do this, because it's a very complex issue. But then again, in the end, will there be a commercial product or will this be like an open source platform or uh, can anyone so use it? The, the way that, that the alliance is put together is that there are no particular business model rules. Any, anyone mm -hmm. can come in, they can create an open source to, and share it that way, or they can create a commercial product. Our platform will be pretty much the same. Uh, it's not an open source platform, it's a, it's a place... It's like where, where people can bring their, their IP and they can make a, an, an API, make it accessible. If they want to charge for it, then they would have to set the, the tariff and the value. And, and so, so today, um, we've built what we have. And we said it's going to be uh, uh, free of charge through um, this initial phase. At some point, it'll be rather more like Google's geolocation API, where you get 2,000 lookups free then per day, and then it starts to uh, charge. So we're always going to enable the developer community by having a free tier. There's always going to be a way to do it for free to a limited extent. And then at some point, someone wants to get paid. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Just just when I was interested in, in how you do that. And um, uh, is, is, this, is this technology backwards compatible? Can you, use, uh, can you apply it to all the sensors? So, yes. Uh, one of the things with, with a, in a passive network-derived location is you can derive location from any device. As long as it transmits a signal and you've got the, 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 the know-how in the network to, to triangulate it, you can get a location for better or worse depending on you know, the parameters of how you've deployed the network, the kind of gateways you've got and the kind of algorithms you apply. So all devices would, you know, can be located and then uh, as time goes on, people will create new devices with new sensor technologies and optimize and improve. And so you'll have some very sophisticated but low cost solutions that will start to emerge. And that's really what we're looking to is to drive that innovation. Yeah, I was thinking about it because uh, apart from geolocation, a lot of people talk today about uh, um, uh, over the air updates. So I was, right. uh, yeah, so. Uh, um, yes, and that's an important one too, you know, so that uh, once you've got these devices out there, uh, you can't afford to deploy millions of devices and then have to go visit them in three years' time when something changed or there's a vulnerability exposed. So the, the firmware over the air is, you know, is, is supported by the Alliance. There's some good technology there, and we're, uh, the, you know, that's going to be pretty much deployed in every device I, you know, from the middle towards the end of this year, I guess, because it's, it's super important. Right, so um, you are... Um, solving the problem of geolocation, uh, and the Alliance is solving the problem of over-the-air uh, uh, updates. So what is going to be the next challenge for LoRa? Oh, the next big thing. Um, I think it's going to be really in, um, in really making uh, the transition from B to B to B to C to opening up super simple um, plug-and-play solutions because it can be quite geeky. You know, this is a developer's conference, you know, there's a lot of us around here, but you know, if the, someone needs to go to a website, click add to basket, get the box, plug it in. Now, the TTN gateways are up and running in five minutes, but we need a, you know, I need to be able to buy something which is going to solve my problem. I, maybe a farmer is, I'm going to solve my farm area network problem. I need to be a, a restaurateur and buy a restaurant solution. You know, so each one of these solutions needs to be packaged up, tie a ribbon on it to deliver it, and plug and go. How are, we, how are we going to do that? Because I, I, I have the same idea. I mean, it feels a little bit still like a technology push and, and, and a showcase of what we can do with all this technology. But uh, but basically, the end consumer is not interested whether it's LoRa or whatever. No, they, they want they, they something that works. Yeah. yeah. So, so just, how, how are we going to bridge that gap? 
I, uh, we do see quite a lot of initiatives like that. And you, know, there's, there's, you go around the, the conference, you'll see IoT in a box in various places and people with starter kits that are, that are you know, very simple, plug it in, it's all pre-configured and it becomes a little bit like you know, um, your Bluetooth headset or whatever, just press the pairing button and it springs into life. So that is, we're now starting to see quite a lot of that activity, um, you know, plug and play solutions. What will be the really big challenge will be to make sure that our networks all um, talk to each other and play with each other and um, message broking and things like that so that it doesn't matter whose LoRa gateway your message is received by, they just get routed to your application. So that's probably the biggest challenge is going to be making sure that all the gateways in the world are connected essentially to each other through um, a one uh, message broking service. And a bit of a recent subject, but uh, should it be net neutral then? Well, <laughs> mm. I think there's, yeah, there's a lot of things around that. I'm not sure I would be fully qualified to, <laughs> to make a um, pass judgment on that, but definitely. Are you, are you talking about it? Is, is it something, yeah. is it a topic that is being discussed? Um, that's not within my, uh, within my circles, but certainly uh, that, that is something that's, that is discussed by people, but I wouldn't want to uh, open that kind of worms <laughs> for me right now because I'm not. Uh, I'm not trying to, to, uh, to, <laughs> to, to catch you in or something, but it was just something that came up because uh, well, recently, obviously, in the United States, they, yeah. they, they killed uh, net neutrality for, for the web. Uh, uh, but if you talk about roaming, if you talk about uh, all networks yeah. that should connect, uh, but also uh, within networks, uh, I can imagine that certain participants want to have a certain quality of service uh, uh, um, uh, working on, on, on these networks and uh, and obviously then talk about uh, net neutrality or not. I Especially think with, with this an, little bandwidth you have. Yes, there's, there's, we, we, need to, we need to get to the point, I guess, where when a device transmits a, a packet, it's, it's, it's burnt the, the airtime. That spectrum is, is burnt for that time that it's on air. Um, that's our scarce resource. Uh, is the spectrum. So if anyone picks up that packet, um, the least they can do is forward it to someone who cares if they don't. So I think we, we need to start from that point of what's our, our most scarce resource. That's the, the, the spectrum. So when, when a device has uh, transmitted and there's been a collision and, and I pick up your packet and you pick up my packet, let's, uh, let's make sure they, they get to the right place. So I think that concept's very, very important, and if we get to the point where there's enough players doing that, I think you know everyone will will start to collaborate, and it'll be a, a great day when um, every LoRa packet can be received on every LoRa gateway. That sounds really like a, like a great day. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you for watching. There's a lot of uh, videos from the Things Conference in our YouTube channel, so watch them all.